What's going on guys, Firewolf Tech here, showing you guys the Sony 42 inch Bravia XR OLED A90K. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all around this beautiful 4K 120Hz OLED TV as a gaming monitor and dedicated monitor for your desk setup. This A90K model comes in two sizes, 42 or 48 inches. I picked the 42 inch model as I feel like it's the perfect size as a computer monitor for a large desk setup. You get a gorgeous 4K OLED panel, super fast response time, and high refresh rates for an amazing gaming experience. The A90K features the latest cognitive processor XR, which Sony says allows you to experience immersive depths and lifelike picture quality. Yes, this is a smart TV, so it will come with Android TV OS with a whole bunch of features that I will personally won't be using since it will be connected to my PC. I personally love how well it flows mounted on a monitor desk arm, so I will be showing you guys how to mount it on a desk arm, so stay tuned. For now, let's dive into this unboxing experience of the 42 inch Sony A90K. I appreciate how well packaged the A90K was. Now I gotta say this TV itself is on the heavy side. Without the stand, we're looking at about almost 30 pounds. And with the stand, you're looking at about 36 pounds. So it's definitely on the heavy side. I mean, compared to the LG C3 that I did earlier, um, it's definitely a lot heavier than that. But the TV itself is actually very well built. It does feel like a tank. And here we have the actual panel itself. It looks nice. Now I'm actually surprised that it didn't come with any protective film cover over it. Um, I would have loved to see that. All it comes with is just the energy guide sticker on the bottom right. But inside the box, we're gonna get the actual metal base. And this base itself is actually on the heavy side, and, but it does feel really premium and nice in the hands. And then we're gonna get the actual um, leg risers here so this is optional if you want to have the base higher and then this is going to be the legs that are going to mount directly to the base that we saw earlier you're going to get two of these and then we're going to get some back panel covers now this is going to be for the side and then we're going to have it for the back since you have inputs on the side and the back now inside we're going to have a setup guide and then we're also gonna have the actual remote here, which I think looks really nice. I love that brush aluminum look on the actual control. Now, I would have wished that it came with a internal battery, let's say charging via USB-C. So unfortunately, we're stuck with the old ancient batteries, but at least they do include the battery. And we do get screws here. This is gonna be used to screw in the mounts. And then we're gonna have all the little papers that nobody reads. All right, looking at the inputs here, we're gonna have your standard RF connection input for antennas and cables. You have two USBs, a 3.0 on the bottom, a USB on the side, an optical digital out, ethernet port, and here's my biggest issue here. Now you do get four HDMI ports. What I don't like is that only two of them feature HDMI 2.1, and these are gonna be reserved for slots three and four, which means that if you want that variable refresh rate, you're gonna to have to connect it to slot four or three, and then you get two additional HDMI 2.0 slots. I would have loved to see 2.1 across all HDMI ports. All right, let's go ahead and install the stand here. Now, we'll be mounting it on a desk arm, but for now, I'm gonna show you guys how to install the actual stand. You're gonna take the legs here and you're going to use four screws to lock it in place. Now, if you want it to be higher, you can use the optional risers that I showed you earlier, but you have two different options. So for now, I'm gonna use this option here. You're gonna secure it in place with four additional screws. And once you have it nice and locked in, you have a nice seamless flat design. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and power on the TV with the included remotes. Now I'm gonna save a lot of time here. I'm gonna skip through a lot of these steps. And once you have it nice and set up, you're gonna be greeted to this beautiful scenery over here. I think it looks absolutely fire. This panel looks gorgeous. Now I thought the setup process was done, but they actually trick you, which means you have to set up even more, but I'm gonna skip through all of this. And once the setup is finally done, now you're greeted to the actual home screen. And let me know what you guys think, how it looks with the stand itself. I think it looks absolutely fire, but I prefer having it mounted on a desk arm. Now the A90K features Visa mount 300 by 300, but I recommend you picking up a Visa mount adapter here. This is the Vivo 400 by 200. And what that allows me to do is take my existing monitor arm Visa mount bracket and be able to expand it since most monitor arms only offer 100 by 100. Now, what you're gonna do is gonna remove all these four screws here. And once you remove all four screws, we're gonna use the included spacers in the Vivo kit. And you're gonna put it across all four of these screws. 
and then you're going to take the bracket itself you're going to line it up and then you're going to take four screws and you're going to lock it in place to make sure that it's nice and sturdy and now we're able to pick it up and mount it on the monitor arm. And the monitor arm that I'm using here is the AVLT 13 through 43 inch single monitor arm. And what I love about this monitor arm is it supports weight all the way up to 33 pounds, which is more than enough for this A90K. So once you line it up, you're just gonna hear a nice little click and now you're ready to articulate and put it wherever you wanna put it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love the way this TV is floating on the desk arm. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and fire. Let me know what you guys think. Now I have this connected to my gaming PC with a 4090 and you can see here that it automatically detected the highest resolution which is 3840 by 2160 and then I have it nicely scaled at 150% that to me works for me. Now you can see here that it doesn't detect the highest refresh rate which is uh, right now it's detected 60 hertz so make sure you guys change that here to 120 hertz and also make sure that you plug in your HDMI cable on the socket number four or three. Um, since you're not going to see that option if you have it on HDMI 1 or 2. Now once I have the HDR turned on, I highly recommend using Windows HDR calibration to calibrate the HDR so we can see how it looks like in-game. I'm running Modern Warfare on the highest settings and when you combine Sony's 120Hz refresh rate and an RTX 4090 graphics card, it makes gameplay run super smooth while keeping high fidelity. The HDR on the A90K really helps keeping everything lit up since OLED by nature are not as bright. The RTX 4090 was pushing frames between 150 all the way up to 180 frames per second which is more than enough for the Sony Bravia OLED TV. The response time is buttery smooth and I'm blown away with how nice this OLED display looks and would even argue that this OLED TV was meant for beautiful 4K PC gaming. All right, let's go ahead and switch back to the PS5 here. Now, one of the things that I dislike about the A90K is the fact that in order for you to utilize 4K 120 Hertz, you're gonna have to connect your PS5 to slots three or four. And then on top of that, you're gonna have to change the HDMI signal format to enhanced format because that is the only option to enable variable refresh rate because without that, the PS5 will not detect it on the TV which doesn't make any sense, being that the Bravia XR OLED is marketed as the perfect companion for the PS5. I just wish it was more of a plug and play. But once you have it set up, you can see here that on the PS5, it shows that the VRR is supported all the way up to 120 Hertz. Now make no mistake, when you have everything perfectly set up, the display looks absolutely beautiful and stunning. It's something that you really have to see in person. This TV really enhances everything of the PS5, and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I appreciate the quality of the speakers on this TV. I think they sound really nice, and since I'm going to be using this more as a PC monitor on a desk, I'm pretty satisfied with the quality of it, which means I don't really need to invest in really nice PC speakers. So that's one of the great things about having a smart TV as a monitor. Now jumping back into my PC here, one of the most important things for me for a monitor is how well it boosts my productivity and workflow. I recently started using DaVinci Resolve and it has been an amazing experience on this 42 inch Sony Bravia XR OLED. You get so much screen real estate and I feel like it really helps when using editing programs. I have it scaled at 150% which for me personally works very well and makes reading even the smallest details like text look nice and sharp. The screen is very glossy and since this display isn't bright to begin with, it will suffer a lot if you have direct sunlight, so I highly recommend using blackout curtains if your room gets a lot of sunlight. The 42 inch A90K retails for $1,399 and you may find a great deal now since this TV has been out for a while. It's not cheap, but when you're in this price range, you're looking for a great 4K OLED display and the A90K does not disappoint. It's no wonder why you see a lot of people choosing an OLED TV as a monitor. It really works well. The only thing that's annoying is having to power on the TV manually since it won't automatically power on with PC. I also didn't like the fact that only two HDMI ports offers HDMI 2.1. If you're not planning to connect many high-end devices, then you should be fine. You're still getting a crazy fast response time, a sturdy and slim display, a respectable 120 Hertz refresh rate, and a beautiful 4K OLED panel. 
For next gen consoles, I was really blown away with the HDR experience and it really takes advantage of the PS5 and I will be certain that the Series X will see a similar experience. What surprises me the most about this TV is how well you can integrate this on your desk setup without sacrificing a lot of features. I think 120Hz is perfect for 4K gaming and as long as you have a strong graphics card to push those frames, the Sony A90K is a solid choice. The speakers on this TV are good enough to not rely on having to use external speakers. For those that worry about burn-in, Sony really has a lot of built-in features to help prevent that from happening. And besides, OLED technology has been out for a very long time so I wouldn't worry too much about it. All in all guys, the A90K did not disappoint and I would highly recommend this if you're looking for an OLED 4K monitor that does HDR right and is great for both work and play. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching.